We talk about bailment, uh, which is uh, 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 the ability to use property uh, uh, or a right to be able to use property. Uh, it basically equates to uh, the independent contractor concept over in, uh, over in America. And uh, as I mentioned before, we've got um, uh, in our industry operators. Um, and uh, we'd call them fleet operators, I suppose, would be the term we'd use. Uh, some of them could be running one or two cabs. Um, others can be running um, um, 130, 150-odd cabs. Uh, when they're running 130 or 150-odd cabs in a medallion-based system, uh, obviously they don't own all of the medallions. Uh, uh, that would be a significant uh, capital investment, so they lease those medallions. And what we find is that some of the innovations that we've seen in the industry come through from those large fleet operators. And so the large fleet operators contribute to the industry in terms of uh, innovation and economies of scale. Uh, so when we're looking at the introduction of Toyota Priuses and the hybrids into the industry three or four years ago, uh, it was the fleet operators uh, with those economies of scale and the buying connections that were putting in those vehicles and trialling them. Uh, but there's a great advantage of having owner drivers in the system as well because the owner drivers uh, lift the care factor. Uh, they've got skin in the game and they worry about the industry's reputation. So they lift the standard in terms of uh, customer service that gets delivered out there, which becomes the benchmark for the fleet operators. The fleet operators provide the benchmark in terms of the technology and uh, some of the innovation that happens. And John, if we could have that video. This is a, uh, a promotional video that uh, uh, a company called Yellow Cabs has just recently produced and just explains a little bit about the role of a, a taxi booking company or a dispatch company. The home of Yellow Cabs, the logistics of successful fleet management have always been a challenge due to the city's vast geographical footprint. Not anymore. In a huge leap forward for the taxi industry, Yellow Cabs has joined forces with logistics gurus MT Data in a multi-million dollar rollout of a communication system that revolutionises taxi travel. The system is many faceted and broadly known as Yellow Cabs Data Dispatch. It's brand new and it's the buzz around Brisbane. Let's look at what happens when you wish to book a yellow cab using either a mobile phone, a landline, or the internet. Using your mobile phone, you may call, SMS, or use the Yellow Cab's mobile booker application. Phone bookings are generally made using either 13, 1924, or 13 cabs. Phone calls from mobiles go directly to a bank of operators in the Yellow Cabs Communications Centre. Calls are handled personally by up to 40 operators processing as many as 2,500 calls per hour. Each operator quickly takes the relevant information from the caller and enters it into the data dispatch system. The cab will be dispatched in seconds. SMS or text messages are also dealt with in the same way only with a return text message sent immediately as the cab has been dispatched, confirming the booking. Mobile Booker is a phone application which the user customises to include favoured locations and preferred type of cab, along with other personal preference options. Bookings via Mobile Booker bypass the communications centre operators and go straight to the dispatch system. When using a landline, your booking will be automated if you are a regular caller. You'll be given a recorded prompt, which asks if you're ready to travel and have four or less passengers. All other calls go directly to an operator. Courtesy phones and quick cab terminals have also been installed in a large number of venues around Brisbane and most of these are also automated systems with no operator contact. If you are booking your yellow cab via the internet, there's a brand new real-time booking system that provides a direct link to the yellow cab's data dispatch system. The exciting new Taxi Web Booker is a user-friendly interface which fully utilises the amazing capabilities of the system. Let's now look at these capabilities in more detail. Onboard GPS equipment allows the communications centre to locate and identify each and every cab and is the key component of the data dispatch system. An advanced satellite navigation system is available to assist all drivers with a simple one-touch operation. Live Tracker allows for a taxi's progress to pickup point to be tracked when a cab is ordered via taxi web booker. Multiple taxis may be tracked using this feature. SMS on approach and call on approach are messages sent to phones to alert the caller that the cab is making its approach to the pickup point. With Brisbane's largest taxi fleet and the state-of-the-art Yellow Cabs data dispatch system, let's now demonstrate why Yellow Cabs should be your only choice of taxi company when you next book a cab.
Let's use a hotel concierge as the example. Firstly, he types an intending traveller's name and destination into Taxi Web Booker. A phone contact may also be entered as an option if SMS on approach is desired. A taxi is automatically dispatched in an instant. The driver will be alerted to the booking as soon as the system sends the information via his mobile dispatch controller in the vehicle, which includes a touchscreen and speakers. Drivers don't even need to be in their cab as they can pre-accept a job using a handheld remote. If the driver is unsure of the pickup address, he'll find it using a one-touch advanced satellite navigation feature. As he quickly makes his way to the pickup point, his journey can be viewed on screen using Taxi Live Tracker, which will show the progress of the booked cab as it proceeds to the pickup point. Any number of cabs can be viewed and their progress reported to club members, restaurant patrons and the like. When the driver is close, a message may be sent to the mobile phone of the patron immediately prior to pickup, complete with greeting and taxi number, thus avoiding all taxi ownership disputes. SMS on approach is automatic for phone bookings and an option within Taxi Web Booker if the patron's phone number is entered into the system. The patron meets his cab with ease. The cab driver has the choice of following passenger directions to the destination or simply accessing the sat-nav feature again. The journey is undertaken in the shortest possible time as the cab's progress can be monitored constantly at the communication centre. This can be in real time, as it happens, but also, amazingly, historically, as records are kept for a period of time. The implications of this are incredible. Disputes over routes taken, fares paid, property lost or misplaced, identity of driver, type of yellow cab, time of journey, plus a raft of other benefits are accessible using a simple search feature in the communications centre. Security of both passenger and driver is also considerably improved as the contact between car and base is via GPS, radio and Telstra's NextG network via a SIM card in the dispatch controller in every cab. The system has already proven to be an invaluable aid to law enforcement agencies in tracking persons of interest who've travelled by taxi. Taxi Web Booker is available to businesses and home users alike, but really shines as a very valuable tool for establishments wishing to give their members and regular customers a value-added component to their membership or regular patronage. Taxi Web Booker is available at yellowcab.com.au. The key word associated with the Yellow Cab's data dispatch system is accountability. Quality assurance and improved operating efficiency are automatic due to less downtime during a driver's shift. The result is a better service for patrons and higher returns for taxi owners and drivers. Street directories are no longer needed and jobs can be allocated in advance during the current... Okay, uh, if we go back to the PowerPoint slides now, John. Okay, uh, just uh, uh, one message to take home from that video is that uh, uh, the way we've set up our system, uh, uh, particularly in Queensland, but uh, generally in Australia, is that that, uh, that dispatch company takes responsibility for customer complaints, takes the responsibility for uh, uh, disciplining drivers and, uh, and fleet operators, uh, and therefore it's a, a something of a co-regulatory model. Uh, and I'd advocate that uh, uh, leaving uh, some of these responsibilities to the industry to solve is far better than trying to bring them back into government and then trying to, to work out how you uh, uh, put in place a compliance system. Allow the market to do it. It works, uh, works pretty efficiently. Uh, we regulate maximum taxi fares uh, in my home state. Uh, uh, fares uh, are worked out by uh, using a model developed by PricewaterhouseCoopers. Um, it's recalibrated periodically every three or four years. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, inputs uh, for that model are uh, uh, in that black area at the bottom of the screen. Uh, the system works pretty well and uh, uh, importantly uh, that model is a transparent model so industry can actually calculate it, uh, I calculate it, uh, the government can calculate it. Uh, everybody uh, that has an interest in the taxi industry can actually work out how our fares are, uh, are increased um, and there is a regularity about it uh, which is uh, a significant feature of uh, the way we regulate the uh, our fares. Uh, typically fares in Australia are, are based on a, on a flag fall. Uh, 
uh, on a booking fee, uh, on a distance rate and a detention time. Uh, there's no rocket science in that. Uh, but uh, one of the things that we do do is we have variations in tariff times. And uh, recognising the fact uh, in Queensland that uh, if a cabbie's going to be out there between midnight and 5am, it's a tough time. Uh, most of the customers out there don't have a lot of options. They're uh, relying on the cab service and therefore uh, you can uh, make that a premium pricing area. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, standard time between 7am and 7pm from an Australian perspective, we'd say that there's a lot of our uh, uh, folk who are uh, reliant on taxis, using taxi services in, in, in those times, who are uh, maybe socio-economically uh, poorer off, uh, and we'd treat that as our, our poorer time. Uh, the tariff too then becomes uh, uh, the standard fares um, uh, type times. How do our fares compare with, uh, with the states? Well, at the moment, uh, uh, with the exchange rate at uh, something of a record high at uh, 92 cents uh, American, uh, our fares are uh, a little more than, an, uh, than uh, uh, New York fares, um, except for uh, trips under a kilometre. Uh, but as you'd see, uh, uh, when we're, our uh, exchange rate is at uh, its typical uh, historical position at about 75 cents uh, US, uh, our taxi fares are, are pretty reasonable about 10% uh, lower than, uh, than New York. Uh, in terms of uh, supply of medallions, um, uh, I mentioned before medallions are, uh, uh, are restricted in supply and issued by the government. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, how do you tell um, uh, whether the industry is performing well, uh, one of the things that, uh, that uh, regulators use over in Australia is uh, minimum service levels. Uh, they define them in different ways. Uh, in my home state, uh, we're expected to be able to deliver a taxi on 85% of occasions within 10 minutes and off-peak occasions. Uh, and uh, if, uh, if yellow cabs using, uh, for example, uh, uh, their system, uh, one of the things their system has to do is has to produce reports for the government which demonstrate that on 85% of occasions in those off-peak times, uh, a taxi turned up for the customer. And uh, if they're doing that, uh, typically customers aren't complaining in large number uh, and everybody's happy. Uh, uh, that also then uh, provides you with some guidance on uh, when you need more taxis, uh, when you're not delivering against those sorts of targets. I'd be interested to get some feedback uh, uh, after this presentation sometime from regulators as to um, what sort of minimum service levels you're using and whether those um, are, uh, are pretty stiff or whether they're uh, uh, too easy for the industry in your view. Uh, in terms of green issues, just sort of wrapping up this presentation as quickly as I possibly can now, uh, uh, we've been using alternative fuels for, for an awful long time, started using LPG because there was no excise on it and therefore it was an attractive fuel to use. Uh, but interestingly enough, Australia now leads the world in terms of auto gas use, a small country such as our own, uh, because we're number one, we've got a plentiful supply of LPG, but also too, the industry recognised that they needed to find outlets for their fuel um, if they wanted to be taken up by the broader market. So the taxi industry has got about 2.5% of the total fleet of vehicles that will use LPG, but we use 20% of the demand. We're a high uh, uh, consumption uh, group and we're a localised consumption group. So the LPG industry rolled out their alternative fuel um, uh, into, uh, into outlets in, uh, in, in taxi areas like uh, capital cities. Uh, we then picked it up and started using it, which then allowed for the economies of scale for other users. And consequently, uh, something like 50% of fuel outlets in Australia now um, uh, retail and sell um, LPG and that's allowed it to, to take off. Uh, we would expect the same thing would happen if uh, there were some developments in hydrogen. Uh, I'm not sure about the fully electric car as to how we'd be involved in that. But if, uh, if in the States you're looking at promoting alternative fuel uh, strategies, uh, leveraging off the, the taxi industry's consumption of fuel makes a, a great deal of sense. Uh, we've seen a, a significant increase in the number of hybrids. Uh, some governments have uh, tried to uh, attach uh, a condition on licences uh, to uh, encourage the adoption of, uh, of green vehicles. Uh, but what we've actually seen is more vehicles have gone into operation simply because of the commercial advantage of, of uh, the fuel savings associated with hybrids. Uh, and we're quite happy with their success, their reliability and some of the, uh, uh, the stories about uh, uh, battery life and, uh, and the expense of batteries uh, haven't proved to be a problem to us. Uh, in terms of accessibility, uh, and I'll just spend a little bit of time on this, um, uh, 
Uh, we have a Disability Discrimination Act came out in uh, 1992, two years after the ADA, and consequently drew uh, significantly on uh, the Americans with Disabilities Act. Uh, so there's a heap of similarities. Ten years after our uh, act came in, uh, somebody decided we'd come up with some standards, so they called them the Disability Standards for Accessible Public Transport, which are supposed to help uh, uh, operators of passenger transport uh, uh, vehicles uh, understand how to apply uh, the Disability Discrimination Act. 